Welcome to I Love Stocks, Sunday's edition. Today is April 5th, 2020, and we have a wonderful watch list. TBLT, SRNE, Walmart, CODX, NET, and AYTU. And good morning to you, Miss Vegas. And good morning, Jim, and good morning, everybody. Hope you're having a safe weekend staying home and only going out for only essential items. Obviously, wash your hands, wear a mask, and stay safe. So, um, obviously, you know, a lot of action this weekend. You know, obviously, these corona uh, virus numbers in certain states keep going higher and higher. And um, there was a conference yesterday in the afternoon from the coronavirus team at the White House giving updates on what's been going on. Hopefully, a lot of you saw that. Um, we also have um, the OPEC meeting is postponed until Thursday, so keep that in mind, especially if you guys like trading oil. Um, also, Zoom. You know, Z Zoom's had a lot of uh, action on the stock, but, you know, apparently the New York City teachers have been advised to stop using Zoom to connect with students because of fears of security and privacy breaches. So don't know about that but that's apparently what's going on in New York so let's get started with our watch list here um, and hearts and thoughts and prayers by the way to everybody that's affected with the coronavirus and thank you so much to all the service people um, going from the cleaners to the doctors the nurses the ambulance the firefighters the grocery store staff um, just anyone that is e providing essential services, uh, thank you so much for all you're doing. So we're going to start now with uh, our first one, which is Walmart's, Jim? Uh, TBLT. Oh, I had a Walmart on yeah, the first let's, one. Let's, Walmart's fine. Let's do it. All right. So let's talk about Walmart. Um, and so we did see here, obviously, Walmart uh, had a beautiful run a couple weeks ago, then had a pullback. And then we obviously see that it's back in, um, it's going back up again. And one of the reasons is that on Friday afternoon, they did announce that the same store sales have jumped 20% in the past four weeks, which is not surprising. And so this news was kind of circulating around social media. So as a result, uh, Walmart was already on the move earlier this week, um, but definitely keep this on watch for a continuation, especially we kind of have some information on their same store sales and that 20% is a lot. Uh, may not sound like a lot to many people, but that's actually quite a big number. So uh, definitely keep Walmart on your watch for a potential continuation and uh, whether you're trading the stock or whether you are trading the options. So Jim, let's hear about Walmart um, with regards to what's going on. And uh, we do have some calls in play. We took, just so you guys know, we took the 120 calls. We paid $166 for them and those expire on Friday. So we took that as a swing trade. Uh, on Friday um, after we got the information on the same store sales. So, Jim, let's hear about Walmart. Yeah, well, let me pull this up on the 20-day here. We have a 50% retracement on the 20-day chart of right around 115.04, and that's kind of like a pivot point that we're going to go by. We do have a little trend right here from, oh, I'm going to say right there. And we'll extend that on out, but it stops right here, right about the one thirteen, one fourteen dollar level. So I'm gonna put a little support level right there at one fourteen. Let me just kind of bounce it out. One fourteen oh eight. Let me get back up here. For just I'm looking for just like little support areas that maybe it might pull back to. We are setting up though, it looks like it's getting ready to break out again. We did have a little pullback after hours. That old resistance level that we closed with on Thursday was right around the 118.62. So that's going to be kind of like your first support. Your second one's going to be right down here at 117.47 with a low third support at 116. That could be a strong buy with a 50% pullback on the 20-day Fibonacci level at 115.04. The 
the resistance that we're going to have to break let's bring this up to a one day and that's going to be as you see we did have a nice little nice run in in the close from this one oh let me see right around here right around the one 1704 area so it can pull back there that's going to be your strong buy if it doesn't pull back to that 50 percent retracement on the fibonacci which is the pivot point on the year's chart and we do have another little resistance right here at 119.29 so we need to break that 119.29 to get it up here to 119.91 up into new highs and i'm going to pull up a three-month chart to see or, or six month we did have a double top right here at 124 45 so that's going to be your hard resistance to get to if we break that one resistance level at the 119 and let me pull this back up on that if we break the 11988 our target's going to be 124 124 dollars and that's going to be WMT Miss Vegas which one you want to do next Okay, well, let's do our tough built industries. We're going to do TBLT. Okay. So, you know, a lot of you penny players love TBLT. I actually really like it too. And um, one of the things that, you know, this is called tough built. And obviously, they make a lot of products for the construction people. And um, very nice website. You can see all the tools they make. I love what they said. You know, if it's not going to work, it's, if it's not good quality, we're just not going to make it. And, you know, they're very known for uh, giving, making products for the construction product lines and also for people that are do-it-yourself markets under the Tough Built brand name. So one of the things I want to mention about Tough Built is that um, a, a last week, on March 30th, they did mention that the revenues for the year ending December 31st increased 25% to 19 million as compared to 15.3 the year before. And they also mentioned they have a distribution agreement with Haspaca Group. And they also have a distribution agreement with um, America, with Distribution America. So they have a lot of agreements going on. And one of the things people are talking about uh, that we're seeing is that they're looking to, people are saying, you know, they're probably going to make the face shield uh, because they're into making a lot of equipment. So, you know, the Haspaca group, by the way, I just want to mention this Haspaca group that I'm mentioning here. They are also an industrial supply company and they actually serve a lot of large factories and professionals that need tools and equipment. And they have a catalog with 15,000 items and they have a partnership together with Tough Built, TBLT. And it's a global expansion. And it's actually going to expand into the Middle East, which is an area that's also very new to TBLT. Now, this partnership with Haspaka, by the way, just to let you know, they are an Israeli-based distributor. And you guys know how I feel about Israeli technology. They are one of the best. And um, the fact that they have this partnership with TBLT is also going to let them uh, connect with opportunities into other retail outlets um, and it puts them at an international distribution level which is going to help them be positioned to attract brand recognition throughout the globe so i think this partnership with um has paca which is in israel and a tblt is just a fabulous fabulous arrangement plus the fact that they've already made um great great money now with regards to the chart and jim will talk about it in just one second but i do have a position in tblt and uh, if you look at the chart i mean it's definitely got a pocket pivot it's got you know definitely has support at the 20 day moving average and this is you know a swing trade so you know it's not going to be something that you buy now you know you buy friday and you hope it's going to you know uh, skyrocket this is one of those setups where it takes some time so this is a very cheap penny play i mean we're talking like 15 16 cents and i love it at this price i mean i think it's a bargain so 
that's just my opinion. So do your own due diligence. You know, remember at one time in January, they did have an offering um, that was upsized for $9 million, $9 million and uh, did bring the stock down significantly at that point. But that's out of the way and done. And now we're on to very, very bright horizons. And I just really love this partnership with Haspaca. So I think there's a lot coming with this TBLT. And definitely a hot stock to watch and definitely consider potentially to add to your swing trade list. But all, as always, do your due diligence. I mean, I'm just sharing with you guys what I'm seeing, why I love it, why I'm in it. And Jim, let's hear what you think about this chart. What do you see? Well, I see, as you see, I'm kind of doing things a little bit different with my charting. I've been trying to get more familiar with the Fibonacci levels. And I'm looking here at the 20 day and Miss Vegas is right. This thing's way oversold for the company that it is. I actually do own a pair of knee pads for the work that I do because I'm constantly up and down doing squat thrust every day, probably about 50 to, to hundred of them a day. So I'm always down on my knees and back up. I own a janitorial business out killing Corona's. So we're right here at a 50% retracement. I really do like this as a resistance level right at 18 cents. I like a solid support down here right around 1377 and actually you know that's pretty strong so if it does pull back to that that would probably be my entry level to get in it at 1377 and try to run it up to that 50 percent retracement we do have a little resistance at 18 18 cents and that's that where that retracement is you can see we triple topped over here with lower highs on the wicks and then it kind of created a base right down there at 18 cents I have a long number if you're thinking about going long up here at 22.2 and maybe hold it longer for the duration after this this uh, Corona's thing is over with and probably get a pretty good little bounce out of it. So let's go over this one more time. Low support at 13.77. Target to hit will be that 50% retracement there at 18 cents. Long up to about 22.2. And if you want to scale out there and maybe look for a pullback or maybe just hold some for a very long position, I think you'll be fine. And that's TBLT in Miss Vegas, the next one. Well, the next one we're going to talk about is going to be SRNE. Now, SRNE, also a swing trade and one to also watch. You know, you may not, some people are just not comfortable um, swing trading anything right now. Uh, with regards to, you know, how the market conditions are, and that's okay. Uh, you have to be comfortable with your trading. So, you know, trade what you're comfortable with. But what I do like about SRNE, and I do have it as a swing trade. Uh, first of all, they had a lot of news. Like, they're very involved in the coronavirus uh, situation. So what they're doing is, you know, back in March, if you remember, if you follow SRNE like I have been, um, they've been um, collaborating to develop a gene encoded antibody vaccine that is hopefully going to prevent or help fight Corona virus. Uh, they also collaborated with Map Farm, which is to develop and commercialize this ACE Mab is what they're calling it, which is their trademark to help treat the COVID-19. They also launched a uh, Novel Cell COVID-19 cellular vaccine program in late uh, March. And they also, a couple days after that notice, they also mentioned they have a collaboration with the University of Texas Medical Branch at the Galveston and they're, what they're doing is they're entering into a preclinical testing agreement for the COVID-19 therapeutic candidate. Also, they're going to be providing manufacturing support to Cellularity as CYNK-0011 NK cell trial for the COVID-19. And they're already beginning to enroll patients. So this company I love as a swing trade. And I am long on this stock right now. Uh, we took the position here uh, last week on SRNE. Not only that, but here, let me tell you something else. One of the things I noticed, because you guys know I love options, I trade options all the time. And it's one of my passions, that's for sure. You guys can come check it out in the room and come listen. I'm very passionate about it. 
And uh, one of the things I did notice, if especially if you're new to options, you may want to look at this. So I did look at some option calls on SRNE, and there was a lot of volume, by the way, on the June 19 expiry for the $7.50 strike. And those were going for $0.25, cents, so which is $25 for one contract. So I have bought lots of those because I'm going to anticipate that this stock is not going to stay at this price point. I think that the stock is definitely has an opportunity to do quite well in these market conditions, especially with everything going on. Now, if you look at the open interest on SRNE, on these, uh, the ones I'm talking about here um, that I mentioned, the 750 calls for June 19, you'll be blown away. So check those out and see if they interest you. But you know what? Why is it targeting that price point? I mean, obviously it's cheaper, but I mean, the beautiful thing about this option opportunity is that you actually have time on your side. And you know what? In these market conditions, you want to get a lot of time on your side because it gives you a chance um, to let the stock manifest itself and let some results come out. So if you look at the 750 strike uh, for this SRE, they're going for, they pulled back a little bit. You might get them cheaper. I don't know what they'll be at come tomorrow. Uh, but they closed around last, they're saying 20 cents last close. Um, but over 17,800 open interest. That's very good. And I love it. So keep a watch on this. I also really like the 250 strike because we're pretty much going to be, you know, we're in the money basically here at these price points. Um, and those ones are actually going for about 85 cents, which I think is still a really good deal, considering that you have until June 19. So SRNE has a lot going on and definitely should be on uh, one of your stocks that you might want to do some more due diligence on, one you might want to watch. I mean, on Friday, we saw it had a, you know, kind of had a pocket pivot and a volume surge, but then what happened is it did get some resistance here at the 50-day and the 200-day. So we want to see if we're going to reclaim this, but I will say that the directional movement of the actual stock is looking very strong. So definitely keep this in mind because um, there is definitely strength on the trend of this actual stock. So Jim, let's hear your thoughts on SRNE chart. Yeah, on the 20-day here, we got a 20-day a high of 293 with a 20-day low of 155. That 50% retracement is going to be my solid support there at 226. We did pull back a little bit after hours. It did have a nice little high at two, well, right up here, right around the 267 area. We did close at 248. And now we're sitting at that 61% retracement here at 241. So support 226. And I'm thinking, you know, it probably needs to hold that area because that's where we had this kind of little area up in here where it kind of broke out and pulled back and then had that little pullback. Then Thursday and Friday, it retraced and bounced up and created a higher high from that previous resistance level that we had here at 234. So the 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 20 day high is our target for right now at 293. Support level is going to be that 50% retracement at 226. And no lower than probably that $199, $2 level will be a good solid entry for this trade right now. And I'm just going to look at the year chart. Just pull it up. Let me pull it up on this other one here. Yeah, I mean, this thing was really up here. This thing was up a, just a few months ago up here right around the 450 area and had a real nice breakout to 509. And we did kind of test that resistance level a couple of times here at the 450 level. And it did break that back on uh, the 1st, Jan January the 10th. And then it's had nothing but a solid pullback to that 156. So let's pull this up again on that 20-day. Take another look at it, SRNE. One more time, first support at 226. I'd like to see a strong buy right around the $2 level and um, resistance high needs to break at the 293.
and that's going to be SRNE. And the next one we're going to talk about, Miss Vegas, is going to be Codex. All right. All right. So Codex, as you know, another one that we just have traded before and is back in play. I mean, we, we still have this as a swing trade. I mean, people sold it at the highs and then rebought this on the pullbacks because we still like the fundamentals on Codex. And I mean, obviously, after hours, you know, Codex did get FD approval. And uh, Jim, you could show them that link I sent you, but they did get the FDA emergency use authorization for their Logix Smart COVID-19 test kits. So you know what? There's going to be a lot of action potentially on CODX come next week, come tomorrow even. So definitely keep this on watch. I mean, it had a beautiful run uh, after hours. Um, but, you know, after hours, you know, I really... You know, a lot of times people sometimes get really excited after hours. I really care about what does the stock open at at the open? You know, uh, after hours runs are great. If you love trading after hours, um, that's fine. You know, everyone has a different style of trading. But I really like to see, like, what does the stock do? Even though after hours it does pop, I love really seeing how does it actually behave when the market actually opens. So we can potentially see that uh, Codex could have a pop tomorrow morning pre-market and then let's see how it actually handles it at the open uh, right at 9 30. so you know we do see codex obviously there was a patent talk then we got the fda emergency use authorization for their logic smart covid 19 test kit so we did see a big push in the stock after hours <clears throat> excuse me and um you know they're really looking to uh have the the first step in ensuring what they call accurate treatment i mean codex is obviously uh they did a lot of clinical evaluations for the emergency use authorization so they finally got this approval i mean they submitted this information i think back in late march so uh, definitely keep Codex on watch because um, they have a lot going on as well. I do recall, too, at one time at the beginning of March, if my memory serves me correctly, that H.C. Wainwright did give Codex a $20 target on Codex. So we haven't seen it go there yet, but uh, keep this on a watch for sure. Uh, come tomorrow because you know the news and FGA is given this approval. So, Jim, let's hear your thoughts on Codex with the Corona. Oh, well, yeah, play. Vegas. Yeah, ever since the Corona breakout, Vegas and I have been talking about this stock, Codex, APT, you know, protection gear and, and the testing, test kits. So here you are with CODX. We've had a beautiful 20-day chart on this. I mean, just plum beautiful. It has pulled back with lower highs to a triple bottom right around, oh, you know, right around this area, right around the 746. And we did break out on it, like Miss Vegas said, after hours. It had a real beautiful run. On the 20-day, we have a 50% retracement right here at 1141. And that's exactly where she kind of closed at Friday after hours. And we're going to pull it. But so I'm really liking this for a bounce back up to these levels up here. I think you think Miss Vegas mentioned 14 bucks Friday after the breakout. She wanted to see 14 again, and we're definitely going to see that again for double top. It's going to be a hard resistance there at 1444, and then I'd like to bring it up to this to this other resistance level right around the 17 dollar level. We did have a 1723 high on it. This has a 20 million float on it, so it's decent that. Qualifies for my low float anything under 25 million to me is a low float and then you got your lower float It shows a lot more volatility as the lower they get So we got a low support. Let's say I'm gonna say probably You know just looking at the chart no lower than 908 and I'm gonna draw that in here Got to put that up there first Right there. Well, let's go 896 that 904 somewhere around the nine dollar area is going to be your low support your second one's going to be right here right around the 1025 we're going to put a little support level right there and the resistance that we need to break is and we'll pull this up to the daily one minute where we can get these highs up in here you see how it's a beautiful little run so it might pull back a little bit first thing in the morning maybe to right around a dollar right around this 1025 area and if we can hold that support level, that'll be fine. It can pull back to this 1070. 
So we're going to mark that in there. We've got three supports more or less. We've got that 904, that 1025, and that 1070 with the resistance to break is going to be right here at 1164. And we'll pull up the 1020 day again. That 1164 to 1282. And maybe there's another little resistance level right in here at 1384. But I like to see it close or get up to 1444. And maybe if it keeps the momentum keeps up, we can run this all the way back up here to 1723 on the 20-day chart with a long, long target of 20. But, you know, this is volatile times, and these corona stocks are in play right now. The next one we're going to talk about that was mentioned in the room Friday, or maybe sooner than that, and that's NET, NET. Yes, well, that is the NET. Um, definitely seeing some unusual activity here on NET. Now, I actually have never traded this one here in particular on NET, and they are a Cloudfare Inc. You can check them out. They have a nice website. And um, one of the things we can see here on NET is it obviously has a really nice setup here built in. So let me just pull it up here a little closer. One second, Jim. I'm just having a little right. delay here. So we are seeing um, that's definitely overbought. And, you know, it did have a 52-week high as well, by the way, um, a couple days ago. So definitely when you see these 52-week highs, I mean, this is just, you know, net cloud for, I mean, they're into application software, into technology. I mean, they are, um, you know, they were originally a communications network. Uh, but they've actually come into a much, uh, you know, they've evolved, obviously. And, uh, you know, they are kind of, you know, I guess a little similar to, you know, they're into the cloud space. They're into the um, intelligence routing. They do mobile and image optimization. They do video. You know, so people are saying, you know, could this be a little mini Zoom? Um, you mean, you can set up, you can get this all set up in like less than five minutes. I mean, they have a lot of things that they can do uh, for you. Um, but they really do a lot of things, uh, resources for people's um, websites, applications, your APIs, any kind of like firewall application. Um, this is really good technology. So you should definitely consider or looking at this stock as well uh, because it had the 52 week high and we all are also seeing some activity on the option side as well on NET so what we are seeing here on net remember this company here net let me just see here. I think I have um, oh yeah the $25 strike for the April 17 expiry date and those are going for um a dollar $140 each for a $25 strike so it is very nicely set up on the daily and weekly time frame and um we have to just wait and see how this trade actually plays out on NET but definitely keep a watch because it seems to be popping up a lot um, I'm sure, you know, it's one of those stocks, too, that because of the way it closed and the way it has been throughout the week, it is definitely something that everyone's watching uh, probably come tomorrow as well. So if you like to trade stocks at a larger price, I mean, look at the close, you know, 2408. We're actually not too far from this particular strike. So, Jim, what are your thoughts on Nets? Beautiful chart. Yeah, um, I've just got. To my, well, I've looked at it before, I guess, in 2019 when it was down here at a lower price. But for right now, we're going to look at the Fibonacci levels, and, and I see a pennant flag that we've had right here. As we had the high up here at 26.28 with a low down here at 15.05. And the 50% retracement's right here at 20.69. So that's going to be, I think we could pull back from this channel. It's going to squeeze out in a day or two. And then we'll know for sure which way the direction this stock will go unless it breaks out any sooner. Now, there's a lot of tension going out to social media and and connection with people because we're all, you know, cocooning in our own little homes and we're not allowed to get out much and try to, you know, try to just abide by the law. Computers and webcams and just a lot of stuff that 
weren't much interest or in interest now. Same with Zoom, but with that Zoom news, it kind of took a down tick. So let's see, we got a 50% retracement right here at 2069. That's going to be my solid low support. And then maybe another support level is going to be right here. At, let me change this up here. I've been doing an extended trend line method for over 15 years now and not really got into the Fibonacci's that much, but I figured I might as well get into the cloud by saying that. I mean, a lot of people use the Fibonacci retracements for their supports and resistances, and I figured I'd kind of go along with the game and compare them to my extended trend lines. So we have another support right here at that 50% low. I can see that on the daily chart. I can see the pullbacks right here little channel we had here for a couple of weeks and then we had that breakout on Tuesday and then she pulled back with lower highs and with higher lows creating a wedge or some would say a pennant flag by the, by looking at the so the resistance that we need to, do need to break is going to be somewhere right around this 2458 that's going to be one of your targets to break with a resistance high of right around the 2592 and I'm going to call that 50% retracement on a 20-day chart a, a pivot point. So that's going to be a, like a decisive measure. If it wants to go lower than that, then those other ones will be support levels. But I don't want to see it go no lower than that pivot point. You have your first first one that I'm seeing right here. I'm thinking maybe right around here, right around that 2171. And I'll put that in there. Your second support is going to be right here, right around that 2272. And then the last one is that we need to break is going to be the resistance at 2458 to 2592. And if we can break that 2592, we'll go higher. And that's going to be NET. And then we've got one more for you. And it's a penny play. And it's one that I've been watching quite a bit and really like. And that's AYTU. Well, I really got to say, I really like AYTU personally myself very much. I actually have this one as a swing trade as well. Uh, this has been ongoing. Uh, one of those stocks that you just have to be patient on. I mean, this is a dollar sixty-two, and you could see that the stocks had a lot of strength the whole week. It's also had a lot of range expansion. But one of the things I want to talk to you guys about AYTU is that they did, first of all, They've had a lot of news, and first of all, they regained compliance with NASDAQ, which is great. Um, they also got um, the receipt of initial shipment of 100,000 COVID-19 point-of-care rapid testing, and apparently another 500,000 on orders. So one of the things you're going to see with AYTU, if you follow the stock or if it's something that you like to look at, is that they have this, you know, rapid testing, and... Um, what they're doing as well is they, believe it or not, this actual product is made in China, but they got the distribution agreement for the USA. So um, they're going to be looking to have a lot of distribution, and we could see potentially up to um, a million test kits being distributed, and that's a lot. And imagine the revenue that they're going to make from this particular product. I mean, that's just amazing. Um, the The fact that they're going to be dis – the distribution is there, the orders are there. Uh, this is going to be something pretty big, something big to watch for. So definitely keep AYT. I mean, you can get results in 2 to 10 minutes. And they're already supplying first responders in Denver with the product. And um, apparently I was reading an article, too, that some analysts were expecting to see a potential 500% increase on this stock down the road. Not right now, but I guess whenever they have their earnings report coming out. So I think it's great. Um, the chairman and CEO of AYTU, Josh Disbro, he also mentioned that the test kits just went out and they're very proud to help people fight this COVID-19 and that the rapid test kits did go to Denver's first responders. So there's been a lot of um, activity with regards to, you know, what is happening with this actual stock as well. 
And, you know, this to me would be something for, you know, a swing trade. Again, you have to wait for the move to actually come come to you. Let the trade come to you. So definitely keep this on watch this coming week. Again, you can also day trade if that's what you like to do instead of swing trade. That's fine. Um, but definitely keep this one on watch because it is definitely a momentum stock as well. And they've had a lot of good action going on and a lot of recent news as well. So I like the fact that they have their commercial shipment to get test results in two to 10 minutes is amazing. And didn't um, think Abbott Laboratories, remember, Yep. they also mentioned that they have the test kits where you could get results in such a short time. So the fact that they have their first commercial shipment of their two to 10 minute COVID-19 rapid care test kit is fantastic, fantastic information. So, uh, you know, they're going to be providing the U.S. military and the government also with millions of quick tests to diagnose the coronavirus within minutes. So I think that's fantastic. So, Jim, let's hear about this AYT chart because I'm really liking it a lot. Yeah, Miss Vegas is on to something right there. One of the biggest uncertainties, and that is, you know, what's what brings a market down is not knowing if you do have the virus or not. And it's good that everybody in America gets tested at least once, knowing that that would bring some of that uncertainty to a different plateau. And I think that would ease a lot of pain with a lot of people, the way they think on the fear and the stress of the whole thing. I went to the grocery store and I just, I, this the other morning and I just, you know, it, it was just, it was disarming how people were acting and how, you know, people are standing offish on you and everybody's wearing their gloves and their mask and they're like, they're in a panic mode. You can see the stress in everybody's face. So let's go straight to the stock itself. AYTU. I've got a beautiful retracement on this at 50% here on the 20 day at 166. That's kind of where I've created this channel on Friday that I wanted to break or hold. We do have low support. I don't think any lower than maybe 137 with a 120 strong buy. And the pivot point area on a 20 day chart is at 166 with the different resistance levels that I wanna see. I do like the different ones that I've charted on here. We have a 177 needs to break out of the box. Then a 197, 219. I know it's, it's thin margin, but yet, you know, when you're playing with something this small, it's good to take the profit on the highs. And I do have a resistant high here at the 264 level. That's where I want to see it break to the 299. If we can get past three bucks, that'll be great. But uh, like Miss Vegas said, we're both a little bullish on this trade, and I have scalped it a few times, and I'm willing to do it again. Let's go over the support levels one more time 120, 138, and then that pivot point area is at 166. And if we can break the 166 tomorrow, we got four different resistance levels to hit. And you can see them on the chart. Stop this at any time. Draw these numbers down. Copy and paste them. Feel free to do that. And then I'm going to just bring you back to one more thing here. As we finish off, we do have a little YouTube on our website. You can always go to our website and hit this YouTube button. And that will bring you straight to our videos. Please subscribe, ring that bell, and hit that like button. Miss Vegas, would you like to say anything else before we shut this down? No, I just hope everyone has a good weekend, safe trading, and uh, definitely, you know, keep a watch list. I mean, we do these videos so that you have some sort of stocks to actually watch. You don't have to rely on scanners to, you know, help you with finding good stocks. I mean, it's also doing some due diligence, reading some news that can help you create a watch list. So even if you don't have a scanner, um, use these stocks as a watch list in your platform. And then you could monitor them throughout the day and then decide at that point if you're going to take a trade or you're not going to take a trade. So definitely want to wish everyone to stay safe and uh, wish everyone well. And definitely we'll see you throughout the week. So have a great day. And if you're home and you're not, you know, in a chat room, you're welcome to come visit ours. Uh, we do have the free trial and you're welcome to come visit because uh, it's a good way to pass the time. Even if you're not actively trading full time, it's a good way to come and learn about trading. So feel free to come by. Also subscribe and smash the like button on the YouTube. 
Uh, Jim's been doing some broadcasting live. So even if you're not around all day because you're busy doing things at home or you're working from home, you can get a notification when we go live during the day. Jim tries to go live during the day sometimes and goes over some charts in real time. So it's really helpful for you to learn. So yep. that's all for now, and everyone have a great weekend. Jim, anything else to add? Yeah, I was, I was going over the website here, and we have a little Twitter link here, and Miss Vegas posts alerts in here, and I see she posted a little thing in here just lately about our YouTube channel, about how people appreciate it. And uh, just hit that follow button and ring that bell, and she also, you'll get notifications when she posts alert on here, and she does post some great alerts and some great ideas. And uh, that's about it. I just want everybody, you know, we, we do have sympathy for what's going on in the country and we're going to get through this, but I do believe America will change after this is all over with. So we'll see how America handles it. I think we're going to do fine. It's just going to take a few months, maybe into next year before we get another, get a balance of where we are. And this is I Love Stocks. Thank you very much. Thank you.